Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your professor from Johnson County Community College. And the subject of today's short screencast is going to be image maps. They do take a bit of coding, but once you understand how they are created, it's no problem. I'm actually using an image of three states here as my demonstration because commonly when you're looking at a map, you do want to make different areas clickable to go different places. So I've got this image map coded up to go to three different athletic department homepages. Here we've gone to my alma mater, Iowa State University in Ames, Iowa, the Cyclones. So you can see that the three parts of the map go to three completely different locations. And I've also got a cool tool tip shown when I hover over the three states as to where these links are going to go. If I point to this bottom half of Minnesota, there is no image map there. So there's three different shapes I can create on my image map a rectangle, a circle, and a polygon. And now let's look at the code. The code starts out by simply putting the image into the web page, just as you've always done, with the SRC attribute pointing to the image file and an alt attribute that describes the image and would appear on the page should anything happen to this link or this file. So you want your alt text to be as descriptive as possible for screen readers and for accessibility purposes. The one attribute that you are not familiar with yet is use map, but we'll come back to that in a second. The code to create an image map is all stored inside the opening and closing map tags. You must give your map a name, a unique name, and I named it three great teams. Then for each part of the map that you want to be a different clickable area, you need an area tag. The area tag is a closed tag. There's no opening and closing tag. I put these closing slashes right before the closing angle bracket in the opening tag just so they would light up. But as you know by now, those are not required. I just like to look at them when I'm demonstrating this so we can see where we're at. That's a hold back from XHTML to put that closing slash in your empty or void tags. The important thing I want you to focus on is that the area tag has one, two, three, four required attributes. And then this fifth one, the title is just cool, so I wanted to show it to you as well. We start out by defining the shape of our hotspot. And there are three choices, RECT, which is short for rectangle, circle, or polygon. A polygon is an irregular shape. But if your shape is a rectangle or a square, the RECT, the rectangle shape, is a little bit easier to code because all you need for your coordinates attribute is the upper left hand corner where the rectangle starts and the lower right hand corner where it ends. So with these two coordinates, we can define the rectangle. So 0, 0 would be the upper left hand corner. We start our image map in the upper left hand corner. The second set of coordinates would be 173 pixels to the right and 104 pixels down. So that defines the shape of our rectangle. href is obviously where do you want the user to go when they click your hotspot. The alt attribute you already know, that's for accessibility and screen reader purposes. And then the title attribute, that's one we haven't talked about yet. This is a global attribute. The title attribute can be put on any tag. And here's what the title attribute does. It creates the tool tip. So that's very cool. When the user hovers over something, if you want a tooltip to appear, you can use the title attribute on any element. And it's particularly helpful here when we're using a image and carving it up into hot spots so the user's completely clear where they're going to go if they click that particular hot spot. So I've got three rectangles here because each one of these states is roughly in the shape of a rectangle. You might want to ask, how do I know what the coordinates are? For the University of Nebraska here, how do I know that it starts at 0x and 198 pixels down y? And then this far right corner is 170 pixels to the right and 185 pixels down. For Iowa, my upper left hand corner is 174 pixels to the right, 83 pixels down. And my lower right corner is 288 pixels to the right and 172 pixels down for my Y. Well, the way you know those numbers is to simply open up your image in any image editing software. And here I'm simply using paint. And as I roll, for example, let's say I'm going to Hotspot Iowa. If I roll my mouse to the upper left-hand corner, I can see in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, the paint screen, the X and Y coordinates. I'm going to resize the screen so that the information is really close to the image. 
So watch in the lower left-hand corner. If I'm up here in the upper left-hand corner, I'm at 1-1. One, one. As I roll across the top, I'm making my X coordinate. I'm three pixels down. So there we go. I'm at the very top edge of the image, 172 pixels to the right and zero pixels down. As I go straight down, now I'm 172 pixels to the right and 82 pixels down. So that's the key to the whole thing is to realize that up in the upper left-hand corner, we start at zero, zero, and we always do our X coordinate to the right horizontally first, and then we do our Y coordinate down off the top edge second, and that creates your rectangle shape. Now you can do the upper left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner, or you can also define a shape with the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner. Just don't use two coordinates on the same side. Your hotspot would be a line. So that's it for the rectangle shape. It's pretty straightforward. You need two sets of coordinates, which means four numbers. Upper left-hand corner and lower right-hand corner is most logical. Now let's say that we wanted to add one more hotspot to this particular image map. Let's say we wanted to image map a little circle here around Minneapolis to represent the University of Minnesota, Golden Gophers. First of all, we have to code another area in our map. The order of the areas does not matter. This shape is a circle, and the circle shape has three coordinates, only three. And the first and second one represent the position of the center of the circle. And so I'm going to put my mouse pointer right on the city of Minneapolis there and read in the lower left-hand corner, that's 246 pixels to the right and 32 pixels down. So in my code, 246, 32. The second measurement that you need is how big do you want the circle to be? What do you want the radius of the circle to be? And I don't want it to be a very big circle, so I'm going to roll my mouse pointer right above the word Minneapolis and read that it says 246.17. So that's 17 pixels down now. The center of my circle I've already coded is 32 pixels down. So the difference between 32 and 17 is about 15 pixels. So that's my third measurement is just the radius. How far out from that center of that coordinate do you want to go to the edge of your circle. With that finished, now I just need to put in the href attribute value. Where do you want to go? Save, fresh, point to Minneapolis, and now I've got a hotspot, but it's a really small hotspot. It's only 15 pixels large. If I go very far away from that center of Minneapolis, I no longer see my hotspot. Now, as of the time I recorded this, I tried to figure out how to make this image map flexible instead of measuring the coordinates in pixels because this won't respond real well. Notice that if I resize my screen here, the image will resize because I've coded flexible images, but now the pixels are off. So you want to be a little bit careful with your image maps. We'll move a little bit based on how big or small that image is. There's not currently a flexible way to make that image map flex when the screen gets a whole lot smaller. But if you're coding a web page that you believe is mainly going to be used on a regular computer screen and you'd like to carve it up for image map purposes, this is how to do it. Thank you.